All right, so uh, I'm Anastasio, so I'm coming from an organization called Intersect and I'm managing uh, the training portfolio. My background is in physics and as part of hard science person, my mind is always looking for um, kind of concrete solutions. So we're working a lot on um, the training impact and measuring that like since I joined Intersect back in 2017 or 16, I don't remember anymore. So uh, Intersect is a not-for-profit organization and it's um, actually providing its services uh, in um, a few states uh, in Australia, so New, New South Wales, uh, ACT, uh, Victoria and South Australia. And one of the major things that we do is the training portfolio. So we provide digital skills training to researchers. So just to show you how much we do, um, this year we have delivered already 279 live hands-on workshops and we train around 5,500 researchers across uh, different states. You can see the map in terms of like where these people are based. Uh, and also historically, we started like really like slow back in 2012 with 10 people uh, trained and then like start climbing. And the more um, training courses we offer, the more these climbs and um, we reached a milestone of 20,000 participants in 2021, which is um, uh, incredible. So um, short-term evaluation. So I'm going to talk like in this presentation about two aspects. So the short-term evaluation of the art training program and the long-term. So the short-term is um, something that we did almost since day one, where we were trying to evaluate our training, um, training uh, on HDR students, researchers, and staff. Um, here is our administration system. I don't want to um, overcomplicate things. I want you to focus on the survey part. So the survey part that we use is, um, we use a, some questions with a scale from zero to 10, where zero is not at all, 10 is extremely, uh, and then we evaluate our training based on a few uh, different um, metrics. So one of the most common ones is the net promoter score that is widely used in um, industry, uh, which is the typical question, how likely is that you would recommend something, a service to colleagues or friends? This is like, so if you see this question, it's the net promoter score in other services. Um, then we use uh, five different quality metrics for the training. So for example, we ask um, how was the training atmosphere? Uh, how comfortable was interacting with the instructors? If the instructors were knowledgeable, if the instructors gave clear answers and if the instructors were good communicators. So we try to get the feeling of the teaching style. And we use uh, three additional evaluation metrics, which is about worthwhile attending, how likely is that you use uh, you will use this technology and if you feel confident to apply what you learned there is a tricky part there because like we know that people when they do training they feel super confident but um, it's good to capture it there as well uh, we capture also qualitative feedback which is used actually to evaluate teaching as well uh, improve the course material and get feedback on course development so we get feedback on people like what they would like to see and what is missing in our course catalog this is an anonymous survey, so we only captured the course date, course name, and where it happened. Um, all trainers, uh, um, all instructors ask their attendees to fill in the survey at the end of the course. But also we found that people who are leaving the course earlier, they may miss the survey. So to boost a bit the numbers, we um, created an automatic reminder that sent to all participants uh, the following Monday. So all the participants who uh, did the training last week, they receive a, a reminder the following week. Okay, let's see some numbers now, actually, like um, what's going on. So our net promoter score this year is plus 76, based on 2,100 responses, which is around 40% of um, the attendees, which is a great response rate. Uh, and then in terms of the metrics, the five quality of teaching metrics um, out of zero from 10, like you can see that it's uh, all of them more than 9.4. So we try to keep capturing uh, all these um, metrics in order to understand better, like if what we provide is uh, really valuable for all the attendees and it gives a, um, a evaluate also like uh, everything that we do, all the different aspects of the teaching. Historically, like you can see also that this is growing as well. So each year is improving, but also our average NPS is improving. So we're very happy to see that. And it's based on 8,000 responses. So trying to get as much data as possible. This way we can evaluate and we can feel more confident about like the story that we're saying and also like about uh, the quality of the teaching. 
But now like the biggest question, like how do we evaluate the long term? So short term is something that we feel confident that we capture quite well and we get a lot of feedback. But what about long term? So how do you understand the long term behavioral change and impact of digital skills training on HDRs, uh, researchers and staff? So we wanted to capture what's the impact on the researchers workflows, the long term one, what support services the researchers use after training, because like if you see literature, like the confidence of people like doing some digital skills training is very high in the beginning, but then super fast drops down and needs some support in order like to get going and adopt the technology. And then also like if there is a link with um, between tools and technologies and research outputs, which is something that all the higher ups are looking for. Um, okay, so what we did this year is uh, we started with a team uh, of eight people uh, from uh, Intersec to uh, start this project. Uh, there was initial discussions about how do we do it. Um, we checked the literature review. We saw other um, initiatives as well. So explore different metrics that are widely used. Uh, and then we had some experts in the team who designed the survey and um, what is the best design? How do we capture all these um, things? We distributed the survey for the first round. Um, we did some an, uh, preliminary analytics and the goal is that we uh, integrate this in our um, systems. Uh, the survey, uh, it has three sections. So the first one that uh, the first section of the survey is about training impact. So captured the long-term behavioral change on researchers workflows. The second section of the survey was about post-training support. So what services they use after the training. And the third one is about research productivity. So is there a link between all these digital tools and the research outputs and grants? So the first bounce was sent to almost 5,000 people. We received 743 responses. Uh, we're planning to send another bounce uh, later this year. And um, sorry about that. Uh, and we're gonna um, receive even more. So hopefully we can reach a thousand responses uh, by the end of the year. Um, so we had to set up all this. It's a overwhelming data set, to be honest, like after the 743 responses and so rich uh, information there. So we had to set up where we can store all these, like it's uh, in cloud in computing, using like different tools as well to analyze. The analysis can happen in different ways. So it can be grouped by different faculties because we have this information. It can happen in um, uh, technology that they use in the role and position, the competency uh, and the number of courses. So if they did one course or if they came to different courses and also there are different topics of uh, analysis. So the demographics, like check the behavioral change, the post-training support, also like check the e-research services, um, e-research um, e analyst services that we provide to, to them and also like link uh, the digital tools with the research uh, grants and outputs. And the last bit is like to provide a reporting. So I'll talk about this like uh, quickly. So just to show you the preliminary results, um, this is the what uh, Catherine mentioned, this is the Kirkpatrick's model. So we use these uh, four metrics that you can see here, uh, reaction, behavior, learning, and results. Um, I'm going to quickly show you that, you know, for uh, the first one, did you feel attending the course was, was worthwhile? So more than 75% said very worthwhile or extremely worthwhile. I forgot to mention that this sent to people who attended a course at least a year prior to the survey. So um, uh, all these people are talking a year after. So in terms of behavioral change, so you can see how frequently they use it. And the other two are the most important ones for me. So confidence, so more than 80% are saying that they feel much more confident or more confident after a year. And to what extent it's the technology has been helpful. You can see that more than 50% they're saying very helpful. And if you include somewhat helpful is close to 90%. So very good results, very promising and um, trying to capture like with quantitative ways like the impact also. Uh, I'm going to show you a bit the link between the digital tools and research outputs. So we asked, did the knowledge acquired in the course contribute to your ability to produce materials that led or made lead to um, the following research outputs? So people could select one or more. So here you can see the distribution of responses. So most people uh, answered journal article, 
followed by thesis, uh, presentation, conference abstract, etc. So more than 80%, uh, almost 80% of the survey recipients, uh, respondents um, selected at least one research output, which means like that there is strong correlation between all these digital tools and the research output. So of course, further analysis needs to be done, but this is something preliminary just to show you actually like a bit of the data. Uh, what's next? So as I said, we need to integrate this one and be an automatic procedure that we send to all people every uh, a year after they do a training. So hopefully we can get some thousands of um, responses. We send it biannually. So this is the second time that we're going to send by the end of the year. Uh, we hope to produce a report with all our key findings and share it with the wider community. Uh, our ambition was to do it by the end of the year due to all these things that are happening. Hopefully it's going to happen by early next year. So we're definitely going to share our key findings with everybody. And then of course, enable all our members to explore the data even further. So we're going to share the data openly with our members and um, they can um, check the data and they can um, help hopefully like um, provide some more inputs on the training impact.